Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Entre Filmmaker, the place to become a better filmmaker and first and foremost, an entrepreneur. Don't play with that thing. My name is Shmuley Hoffman, I'm your host. Today, I have my daughter with me because my wife gave birth a few days ago, so I have to watch her. So I don't know where to let her go, but it's safe to have a camera pointing on her and just watch her what she's doing so that we know that she is behaving well. Today I have a question for you. Are you a freelancer or do you work on a day rate or negotiate project rates? Do you know that over 80% of filmmakers and video people are missing out on this little trick that keeps them losing $1,000 per month or even more? Let me show you how you can fix this. You have to look in there. Let me show you how to, you can fix this with this little psychological hack and get your money back today. Are you getting your money back today? Have you saved money? I don't have money. Why not? Because mommy didn't even give me money. Why? But when you do this trick today, then you can save money, even though you have no money. Imagine you have no money and you save the money anyway. Oh, the bumper. See, when we meet with a new client or get a new project on the horizon, we get the question of what do you charge per day or what is your project rate? Most people have a hard time to fully say, I charge X. Many people are hesitant to really and firmly say what they feel they are worth and what they charge. Many people say it more than, mm, if you want, I can charge $250 a day. The first tip I'm giving you today is that you should rehearse your little sentence of how much you charge in front of a mirror before you show up at the client meeting. Lock yourself into your bathroom, look in the mirror and say how much you charge. I charge $10,000. No kidding. I mean, no kidding that you should do that, not that I charge you $10,000. Pay attention that you don't blink. Blinking is a sign of insecurity, especially if you are in front of a client. So say, I'm charging $10,000 and keep your eyes open, really open. I'm charging $10,000 and look in their eyes. And also don't look just away once you finish the sentence. Like, I charge $10,000 is a sign of the, like you're not confident. Do it this way. I charge $10,000 and quiet, let him look in his eyes, let him digest. Now raise your shoulders and say, I charge $10,000. Now lift your chin. Also, you know, that signals that you're confident about yourself. Lift your chin like this. I charge $10,000 and look in their eyes. Say it louder again and again. Okay, now you're ready to go to your client meeting. This was the first little trick but let me get to my actual hack that I promised you in this title. This was just a little extra for you. Did you notice that most people when they are asked what they charge, not only say it in a pretty insecure way, I'm not charging anything, but more so they give you round numbers. Let me explain what I mean. When I started out, I would make it full numbers in order to make it kind of easy. Like, hmm, I'm charging $500 a day. I'm charging $600, $1,200 a day. Or on a bigger budget, mm, I'm charging $20,000 or $40,000 for the video. Now the client thinks in terms of the first digits that you give him. For example, you know, 20,000, 1,200 and so on. He usually doesn't care if it's 20,000 flat or 20,500 for example. Now here is the hack. Instead of giving your clients round numbers and losing constantly money, give them uneven numbers. I usually use on day rates $50 increments. So for example, instead of saying, I charge $500, I charge $550. Instead of saying, I charge $1250, I charge, no, that's wrong. I would charge $1250 and wouldn't charge $1200. Now, you might think, oh, that's not a big deal, $50. I can eat two pies of pizza. Oh, yeah, here's a joke. 
Now you might think, oh, that's not a big deal, $50. I can't afford that, it's just two pies of pizza. But hey, if you do this over the course of let's say 10 days, or even a full month, you just missed out on $500 to $1,000 altogether. Is this still too little to bother? That was an important look on my face, right? Now your concern might be that the extra $50 makes or break the ordeal, right? No, not at all. You know why? Think about it. Clients most of the time assess if they can afford and want to afford you by the first digits of your price. They determine if you are in the 500, 700 or 1200 category for your day rate. The extra $50 don't even register because in the bigger scope of hiring you, this number is absolutely negligible. But for you, an extra $50 in your pocket can mean a 10% raise instantly per month. And who doesn't want a raise of 10% right here? So if you say 550 instead of 500 or 1250 instead of 1200, it doesn't make a huge difference to your client emotionally. Now what happens if you work on project rates? How does it work here? The only difference is that you don't increase your prices in $50 increments. Let me get clear. Obviously you have to have real numbers first. Don't make up any numbers, put it in your spreadsheet, but then work with it. So would be kind of silly if you say, you know, your cost would be, let's say, $28,955 and you say to the client, oh, you know, the project cost you $30,000. I would tell them that the project cost $32,500 in a $30,000 category, for example. Here again, the psychology is that clients mostly think in categories of pricing of the first digit. If they have a 30K budget to squeeze in another $2,500 in our example usually works for them if they really want you. Often this can be used as negotiation buffer as well. I have a client, for example, where I know he wants a deal every single time and he negotiates me down every time. So I would tell him, hmm, the project cost you $23,500, for example. And we would settle somewhere in, in the area of 21, 20, 20, wow, that's a tough number, 21,500 or even 20,500 or whatever. But if you tell him it costs $20,000, he will for sure say, oh, this is a little much, I can't afford that. So where are you going to? You can't go up with your discount, you can only go down. On a side note, I try never to go down except for this client. So when the question comes to lower the price, I would rather throw some extra things in that might be beneficial maybe an extra logo animation or an extra day of shooting in order to accomplish a certain critical goal. Always give more value rather than going on discount because if you start with discounting, discount never ends. Then it's the first time, then the next time it will be lower, it will be lower and lower and lower. Laurentia, liebe Laurentia, mein, wann wollen wir wieder zusammen? In conclusion, don't lose your money by not pricing you right. Use odd numbers in order to get the maximum for your services. You are worth it and your client wouldn't mind much either. He sees the big scope of the project. He doesn't, you know, hopefully nickel and dime you on, you know, $2,000, on $50, whatever it is, unless he's a nickel and dimer. And if he is, then you better don't work with him. If you like those hacks and had a little fun and found it a little ridiculous, then just sign in your name downstairs, downstairs, down below the, the box with your email, your name. I would love to send you more of this kind of stuff. And thank you so much for watching. This is Entre Filmmaker. I'm your host, Shmuley Hoffman. All the best. Thank you. What? My daughter sneezed. Sorry. I'm a great singer, right? Do you like my singing? No? Okay, tschüss. Go. You might have to go offer blah, 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 and then want to go down with the price. I say, I can't go down with the price, but you know what, I can add, oh, this doesn't make sense, man. Where am I? Okay, so we have to, for example, they want to go down in price? That doesn't make sense either.
Damn it. I have such a crutchy stomach.